All right, so welcome back to another SAT test guide. So in this, we have six different questions that I'm gonna go over. These questions aren't gonna be the easiest, so stay tuned. And if you can do them, you can do them yourself and check your work with me afterwards. So let's begin. All right, question 13. Isaac has twice as many toys as Sydney. If Isaac has T toys, how many does Sydney have? So if Isaac has T toys, right? So I'll say T is equal to, he has twice as many as Sydney. So T is equal to, twice two times Sydney's toys, right? So that means that he has twice as much as Sydney. Well, how many toys does Sydney have? Well, that means we have to isolate X, I mean S. So to get that, we just have to divide both sides by two. Two divided by two just gives us S is equal to T over two. So Sydney has T over two toys, meaning your answer has to be C. So moving on, we have question 14, which is a geometry question. In the figure above, what is the value of X? So basically, you have to be able to recognize this theorem, which states that the two interior angles angles equals one exterior angle. So basically, what does that mean? What's an exterior angle? It means the angle on the outside, right? As stated by exterior. And interior means angles on the inside. So these two on the inside is equal to this one on the outside, which is 140. So it's an exterior angle because it forms a straight line with the triangle. If it doesn't, then it just means it's a random angle on the outside. But if it forms a straight line with the triangle, right, a straight line, it means it's an exterior angle. So, for example, this right here, if I were to hypothetically form this line, this angle right here, Y, would be the exterior angle, and this and this would be the interior angle. The one that's touching is it. So, in this case, let's just use the eraser. In this case this one these two are your interior angles because it's not touching this angle so the two of them x plus x 2x is equal to this angle on the outside 140. to find x we just divide both sides by 2 giving us x is equal to 140 divided by 2 which is 7. meaning your answer has to be c moving on question 15. what is the value of n if 10 to the 2n plus 1 is equal to 1 million so basically 1 million can be rewritten as what base 10. That's the same as 10 to the 6th power, right? 10 to the 6th power is the same as 1 million because there are 6 zeros in it. You just count the number of zeros, and that's what 10 to the what power is. So now 10 to the something is equal to 10 to the something. Let's so cross out the 10 to the something. We just solve for 2n plus 1 is equal to 6. We have to make them equal. Minus 1 on both sides. 2n is equal to 6 minus 1, which is 5. Divide both sides by 2, giving us n is equal to 5 over 2, which is the same as 2.5. Meaning your answer has to be B. Question 16. What is the product of 1.5 and 1.7 rounded to the nearest 10? So let's just multiply them out. This one isn't too difficult. It just takes a little bit of time. 5 times 7 is 35. Carry to 3. 7 times 1, 10. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them up. 5, 5, 2. There are two decimal points, right? 1, 2. So we move two decimal points. 1, 2 giving us 2.55, and that's rounded to the nearest tenth. Well, 2.55, that's a 5, so we round up to the nearest tenth, which is this digit right here. So we meet 2.6, because we're rounding up, because that's a 5. Meaning your answer has to be C. This one is just a little bit of routine work, but isn't too difficult. Question 17. A square has the same area as a circle of diameter 4. What is the length of each side of the square? So basically, let's find... The area of the circle first because we're given the diameter so the diameter is this right here the entire thing across but what's the formula for the area of a circle the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared r representing r representing our radius so given diameter how do we find a radius all we have to do is divide the diameter by two so in this case our radius is actually just equal to two we plug that into your equation so the area of our circle this is representing a circle. That's why it's circle shape. So you get a pi times 2 squared because the radius is 2. So the area is equal to pi times 2 times 2, 2 to the second power, or 2 times 2, which is 4, or 4 pi. So that's the area of your circle. Well, it's stating that the square has the same area, and we're trying to find each side of the square. So basically, a square has a what formula? So a square looks like this, S, S s times s right you multiply both sides giving you s squared as your area 
So for pi, the area of the circle is equal to area of the square, which is s squared. Now we're trying to find each side, which is represented by s. So how do you solve for s squared or isolate s by itself? All I have to do is do the square root of that. Because the square root and the square cancel out. Give you side length is equal to the square root of 4 pi. Well, do you see any answers that look like this? Well, technically, you could you would right away choose b, right? But it's not b. Because we can simplify this. So here's the rule that you should remember. So the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So in this case, the square root of 4 pi is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of pi. Well, what's the square root of 4? You should know that it's 2 right away times the square root of pi, meaning your answer has to be hey, 2 times square root of pi because you can't square root pi. It's a number that you can't do, but you could do you could square root 4, which is 2. You should remember that and giving you answer of a. Hey, this question requires a little bit of work and you have to know each formula, but I think it's manageable as long as you remember what the area of a circle is and the relationship between the radius and the diameter as well as the area of a square, which you guys probably learned in like third grade. So you guys probably remember that. Question 18. On a map, one thirds of an inch represent one fourth, 14 miles. What is the length in inches of the line segment drawn on the map between two cities that are actually 30 miles apart? So how do we do this question? This is more of a proportion question because as you can see, something represents something and we're trying to find that relationship between something and 30 miles so let's just set up the proportion so one thirds of an inch represents 14 right it's on the same fraction it's a big fraction and that's equal to some inches over 30 miles right the miles are on the bottom and the inches are on the top and it's with each respective right one third to 14 x to 30. now how do we solve proportions you simply just cross multiply so you draw these two lines, boom, cross multiply, 14x, you multiply them, 14 times x is 14x, is equal to 1 third times 30. You multiply the numbers inside those circles or those lines. 1 third times 30 is what? That's going to give you 10. So 14x is equal to 10. You divide, how do we get x by itself? Because it's multiplication, we divide by 14 each. Give you x, you use 14 divided by 14, just gives you 1. And 1x is the same as x, is just equal to 10 over 14. Now, we don't have 10 over 14 in our answer choices. So that means we might have to simplify the fraction. So does 10 and 14 each have a greatest common factor? Yes, it's going to be 2. Divide the top by 2, divide the bottom by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 14 divided by 2 is 7. You can't simplify this any further, and it's in your answer choice. So it means your answer has to be B, 5 over 7 inches. So thanks, you guys, for watching. And if you guys have any more topics that you guys want to go over specifically, write in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.